talk about you know the year that was uh 2024 um I still wanted to kind of talk about the election and I think it's important to talk about the election from an energetic standpoint to help provide a sense of calm because people were so freaked out I had clients that were having like panic attacks anxiety attacks I had friends that were crying and I was just like the one that was like I already knew this was gonna happen because I was reading into the energy energy that's what I'm I'm gonna talk about uh if you watched my video last my last video you know I'm I'm back and kind of talked about the work that I do now is I work with energy, I read energy, I see energy very, very clearly. And the year of 2024, as I'm recording this, it's still 2024. It's like December. We're in we're in December right now when I'm recording this. And oh my goodness. This has been such an interesting year. So it's been a eight year, which is leading up to a nine year. Um, next year is going to be a year of what the actual, but it's all serving, it's all purposeful. The energy going into this year has really been very contentious. And as someone that works with energy, I understand how energy works and I'm going to do a completely different video where I go all into energy and do my best to break it down in chewable pieces as I, I like to think of it or how I, I put it into words. Coming into the year, looking at the energetics of it, when you think, so let's let's talk about energy, I have to talk a little bit about energy and, and how I I knew how things were going to play out. So when you think of energy, right? Everything is energy. Every single thing is energy. My hand is energy. This ring has energy. This laptop has energy. The air has energy, is, is energy. It's all energy. Everything is made up of energy. Matter is energy. So like this phone is matter. It's like, oh, okay, it's 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 got some substance to it it literally is energy and it has energy with the different components to it as well you start to really lean in curiously and observe the world from that understanding that everything is energy you start to see the world very differently there's some people that understand energy on the level that I do and they understand how with everything being energy that and, and also energy cannot you, you cannot um doesn't go anywhere essentially but what what you can do is you can really some people manipulate energy. So there's manipulation of energy as well or tuning to energy. Here's where the distinction really does matter in this conversation. The distinction is what's your intention in your awareness of the energy, number one. And then from that intention, how do you tune into the energy? When you look at the scale of, of energy on emotions, when you think of like happiness versus anger, they're on the 
opposite ends of the energetic profile. And the energetic profile is how the level of density that energy has, that energetic profile. So anger is so much more dense versus happiness, which is a lot more lighter. So if you start again, everything has energy, right? So your emotions have energy as well. Okay. Taking that knowledge back to 2024, this entire year, what was your energy? What was your emotions? How how would you say your emotions were for you? I'm going to be 100% transparent here. My energy, my emotions were very much up and down. And I've come to realize that it's okay for me to have my energies up and down because I work with a lot of people and I read into other people's energy. But what I'm really good at is I read the energy and I allow myself to be here and here, but I always try to come back to the baseline. I know my baseline of energetic health, wellness, we'll say that, well-being. So how does all this apply to the election, right? So remember, I asked you the question, what was your energy? When I looked at the energetics of the election, you had one side that was very much focused on, we got to get this guy out. 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 Kept hearing it over and over and over and over and over and over again, right? When you look at the energy of that, the energy was very dense. It was very dense. It was a very dense energy. And people were very apathetic about voting. People started to become overwhelmed and and very disconnected. And so people's energy became denser and denser and denser. The other side had a very different energetic profile. They did. They had a sense of empowerment. It's like, this is gonna, there, there was hope. They had hope. When you look, when I looked at the energetic profile, there was this party, you know, this party or these group of people, or even why they voted for him, honestly, is they, they voted for him from an energetic attunement, attachment, feeling, sensing, connection from hope. Hope is lighter. Despair, upset, overwhelm, it's denser. Going into the election and I'm in I'm in a swing state and oh my goodness, the level of fear mongering and and shaming people into voting that's where i was like what is the actual f- are we doing here how is this ever an appropriate way to inspire people to go vote you had black women who were being called like it was like call to action to all right we need you black women come in and do your part carry the weight of of the weight and the burden. It was very burdensome in how they were communicating and and also very assuming and like, okay, they're gonna show up. It was just taking people for granted. And as a black woman, I was just like, I don't like the energy of this. I didn't like the energy of certain people in the Democratic Party, and I'm just going to be honest, in the Democratic Party, I didn't like how Obama was was talking to Black men saying, like, you need to do the right thing. Like, it was just very energy of it. It was shaming and guilting people into doing what you felt or the narrative was, was the right thing. And it's just like, where was the Obama back when he was running that was inspiring from hope? There was a lack of hope. And, and the energy was, was very much for the Democratic Party, was really focused from a place of low density energy. We got to get this other guy out, you know, like just attacking him and attacking him. And one thing that I know, 
just from like an energy medicine standpoint, because I, I work with energy medicine, I work with energy, right? It's it's one of the things that I do. When you work with energy medicine, one of the principles that they talk about, and I'll try to put it in layman terms as they say, but one of the concepts they talk about is this, it's also like a reminder of how important it is to be aware of your energy when you are when your body is in a level of distress it's like reading your energetic profile and so if you're in fight or flight mode you're in in fight mode you're in resistance to what's going on essentially your body is in that state of fight or flight it's in fight or flight and when we're in fight or flight it's it sends a signal to your body that they're in danger. You're in danger. You're in danger. You're in, da- in danger. And when we're in danger, you're in that fear state. Fear equates danger. I mean, danger equates fear. So you're in that state of fear. I need to fight for my life. When you are fighting, you're in resistance. You're pushing up against things. So you can't receive, you cannot receive anything because you are in that state of fighting things and with energy medicine the key to energy medicine and and really allowing the healing the body to heal on its own is that you have to get out of your own way you have to be in a state of of um reception you have to be receptive to receiving that taking it back to you know, what was going on in the election and just the energy between like the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, the energy was much more denser. It was shaming people to vote. It was, I just don't, I don't understand how is that ever an appropriate approach to inspire people to empower themselves to vote. But then too, it's like, let people decide who they want to vote for and don't shame people because they voted for who they wanted to vote for. People have the power to choose. They really, really do. And the thing that I have struggled with the Democratic Party, and I am not part of the Democrat Party anymore because I don't like how extreme they've gotten to the point where we can't engage people or we can't push back and say, well, I, I don't really agree with that. I think that's too extreme. And it's just like, well, you're just like, an ist put the word before it and it's the ist like racist home you know homophobic xenophobic like all these ic or ist um words and it's just like no i i'm just questioning because i actually do care and i i I care and i want to be sure that we're we're seeing not just like this here but the bigger picture the bigger picture understanding the impact that it has on all the parts like the whole not just this one part on the whole the republican party i mean you can say what you want to say but they were very much like hope filled they were like yes they felt so full of hope they were energized in a positive way if you want to set in judgment of of like well why would they why that person you're missing the point we have to come back to the center of things and this is i feel the purpose of what's going on is to remind the democratic party the other side that you guys have gone so far to the other side that you're not the good guys like you think you are they've lost a lot of people along the way I think the way that they have approached people in conversation is one of shaming people, of guilting people, of baiting people to feel disempowered. And as someone who is very spiritually connected, believes in God, that's where I put my hope in. And I felt really disappointed in the narrative that the Democratic Party was putting out there and was pushing out there for people. I know I'm going to piss a lot of people off with this. 
I really do know that I am and and that's okay. We have to have the conversations that can be really challenging and difficult to have. I think that's part of the problem. We stop having hard conversations. We don't have conversations. We have arguments and and talking points that don't allow for you to actually actively listen and lean in to what someone is saying, understanding their perspective. I will always say this. I always say this that everyone at the base level of of being a human, we all want the same thing and that is feeling safe in our life and in this world. The distinction is how we approach it and it has a lot to do with the people you have in your life. It has a lot to do with like your your path to purpose or how you're empowered by your purpose and I think it's it's 100% okay for people to approach their life in a way that makes sense for them and we have to allow people the space to do that and we all want the same thing and I think now the thing that I know too about a lot of the laws of the world that we live in I always think of the pendulum the pendulum is constantly swinging and the pendulum has swung so far to the left, as you, those people like to say, to the left, that it has pulled so far to the left, it's up here, right? And now it has like swung all the way back to the right. The pendulum swings, the pendulum swings. Things are always constantly moving and changing because it allows for the space for things to expand and for some things to contract, to allow for new things to expand, to, to be expand upon for us to get a greater sense of clarity and understanding of the choices that we're making and how the choices that we make, the things we choose to do, have a cause and an effect. It's energy and action. The pendulum is, is moved by energy. The energy of, of the collective consciousness is what moves that pendulum. And the pendulum, the aggressiveness of how it moves really is dictated by the energy of people in this world. Hmm. So what can we do about it? You know, I just want to remind people going into next year that it's okay to feel how you feel, right? What I really want to encourage and remind people in doing is how can we stop attacking people? How can we stop shaming people for their opinions? And one thing that I find is really helpful, and I remind myself of this because I am very much a human. It's like, well, I want what I want, right? It's so important and it's so valuable. I think this is the point that gets lost in translation. It's so valuable to hold the space and allow other people to express their point of view and to listen to their point of view, not listening to respond, but actually genuinely listening. We got to get back into conversations and we have to get back into conversations that are not just speaking, but actually listening. And the listening piece is what has been missing for years, years. When you look at the energy, look at the energy, look at the energy from the outcome from the election. Look at how split and divided the country is. What has happened? What has happened here? We're at a really amazing point in time where... I want to remind people to connect back to yourselves, connect back to the true source of your your life-giving sustenance. I remind myself that all the time. I'm always in conversation reminding clients and friends and you know people that I love. You get to choose how you respond to things that happen in the world. And I think this is really, really important. You also get to choose how you want to show up in this world. 
and sometimes it can be really super challenging showing up in a world that tells you how you need to be and how you should be. Again, going back to the messaging with, you know, the Democratic Party telling people how they need to vote and shaming people to vote and and all those things. And, you know, also to using people who a lot of people look at like, well, you can't understand my pain, you know, using people who are celebrity, which don't get me started about celebrities. I think that was also something that they really miscalculated as well. I'm also going to say this part too. Why not? Why not just have honest conversations? I'm not the only one that felt this. A lot of Black people felt really disrespected was one word that I heard. Um, I actually heard cultural rapage was a word that was used in leaning into the Black black wokeness and and connection and and things of that nature it's just like here we go again leaning into cultural appropriation for the point or for it just was very manipulative it was a manipulation of cultural um connection and 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 trying to really control people of color um and i also saw it for white Americans as well. It was just different pockets. And it's just like, can we stop race baiting here? Can we stop separating in in that way? The messaging got lost in translation because most people, there's, there's the population in the United States is becoming where people have connections and relationships and friendships and and familial connections or someone they're they're in a relationship with who is different is a different culture than themselves and so it's it's like leaning into the the race connection or talking point and all that it's it it can fall a little flat because it's very one-sided and i think it's a slap in the face for a lot of people that I think that's my point that I was trying to make a lot of people felt like it was a slap in the face stop shaming people that was the part that was so disappointing to me I was so disappointed in in the shaming people to vote and there was this one ad that was running that was saying like um did you know that your your whether you vote is a um public public knowledge and like your friends and your family and your colleagues can know if you vote make sure you vote what is that about like what you can't tell me that the purpose of that was not to inspire and to encourage it the purpose of that was very much to shame people shame people the energy of that low density the other guy won because the energy was just much more higher it was much more it it had a higher frequency they were able to tune in and to tap into that energetic of lighter energy they were happy they were hopeful they were inspired they were encouraged republican party the democratic party it was very low energy it was shaming it was fearing it was filled with anger people and then those things led people to feel disappointed. It led people to feel used, abused, taken advantage of, not not being seen. And a lot of those people who had that energy that they were tuning into, and you see the other side that was much more empowering, they felt more connected just from an energy standpoint. It's a lot, a lot of times it's not about the people it's about the energy everything in the world is energy understanding how the world responds based on the level of density and and the it it it, that's where the difference is so i saw it i saw it i was like yeah she's not gonna win 
I called it because the energetics just were not aligned. They were not aligned. Did I tell everybody? No. I told a couple of people and they were like shocked and horrified. But then, you know, the night of, they were like, oh, tell me, tell me why you thought that. I also want to say that things are not what they seem. There's people, again, that understand how to manipulate energy. And there was a lot of that going on during this election. So I do think there was some manipulation. Some people may call it cheating, allegedly, and for entertainment purposes only. I mean, come on, read, read the room. I'm reading the energy of the room. So I, I, I don't have tangible, like, Oh, I, I, oh, I see the evidence. I don't have receipts, but I can read the energy and the energetic profile matches up with that manipulation and understanding how to tune into the energy to make it align with your intention and the outcome that you, you want to experience. Yeah. And then also knowing the players that were on the other team. And their understanding of how the game works from an energetic standpoint. Yeah. How can we go into to the next year? Um, how can we move forward more so? I don't even think it's the next year. How can we move forward? Tune into your energy. Be honest with yourself. How are you feeling? Are you still feeling sad, overwhelmed, disappointed? Allow yourself to feel those emotions. 100%. How can you tap back into feeling inspired in your life in the way that you can control and dictate what that looks like how can you depend on yourself we have to become much more self-reliant we have to connect to our power and our inner authority to tune into the energy and learn how to relation can come off is is a really harsh word or like oh manipulation but it is manipulation choices are manipulating the outcome see we also have to be aware of the energy that we attach to words they're words to describe what is and we have identified words as being like we're shaming words now. <laughs> There's certain words that we put shame and attachment to, but it really is manipulating and understanding how you can tune in and attune to the energy and, and uh, making choices that are much more aligned to the ideal outcome that you are seeking to experience as best as you can. So take your power back. Stop depending on other people. Feel how you feel, be disappointed, be sad, be angry, 100%. I think this has provided a reminder of feeding into ourselves, building the community around us that we live in, finding the path to purpose within our world where we are. That's where the change really happens. It starts with ourselves and the community, our, our world that we, we live in. So focus on that, okay? I know it was a very jarring experience. I may do another video on the generational trauma triggering experience that was the election for people of color. That was a... a interesting demonstration of generational trauma in action you made it this far to this to the, the end of this video uh thanks for watching and committing to showing up so it's gonna be kind of like a mixed bag of just having conversations and sharing you know the things that i know um, i think we need to really let go of gatekeeping and I am not trying to gatekeep things anymore. So I'm going to be quiet right now. I'm going to end it on that note. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, be sure that you do that. So um, you can be notified of future videos. And um, leave me a comment down below. Like, what's your thoughts 
on the energy of this. Did you see, when you take yourself out of the equation and you look at the energy, can you see what I'm saying? Can you see what I'm saying? Or give me your perspective. I'm always open to other people's perspectives as well. So let me know. Let's get in conversation. And I'm over here always actively listening. So thanks so much for watching. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye. More of the wall in the background. You're missing the point. I don't know for, for sure anything about that. Allegedly, when you start to understand that everything is energy,